Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming today for the Program of Work press conference. I'm here today with a woman who I believe needs no introduction, but since this is her first time in her new capacity as Chargé d'Affaires of the U.S. Mission or Acting Perm Rep, um, I thought I would just take a moment to let you know that that's how you can refer to her. Um, and with that, I think we'll go ahead and allow her to make her opening statements. Thank you. I think this is on. It's, it is on. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming. Um, I'd like to go through the program of work uh, for the month of July that was adopted this morning, uh, tell you a bit about what we have planned before going to your questions. Uh, we have a very busy schedule this month, um, but I want to highlight a few important meetings. On uh, July 25th, the United States will convene a ministerial meeting chaired by Secretary Kerry that will focus on restoring peace in the Great Lakes region. The session will build on several events that have brought renewed energy to this effort. Uh, Secretary General Bond has accepted our invitation to brief, as has World Bank President Kim. Uh, Special Envoy Mary Robinson and high-level representatives from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Uganda, and the African Union have also been invited to brief the Council. Uh, also, a high-level representative of Rwanda has been invited to speak as a Council member. We hope that uh, this debate will help sustain the international attention on the Great Lakes region and encourage continued positive momentum following the signing of a regional framework agreement. Now, on July 17th, we're looking forward to convening an open debate on a topic that we think all of you will take much interest in. Uh, that is the protection of journal journalists in armed conflict and post-conflict situations. Uh, since the Council last considered the protection of journalists in 2006, worldwide violence against journalists has worsened, and there has been a particular increase in murders and imprisonment arriving, arising from conflict situations. Our hope is that this thematic session will provide Council members and all member states uh, an opportunity to hear directly from journalists about the acts of violence they face while operating in conflict areas. Uh, we're very pleased that Deputy Secretary General Jan Iliason will brief at the session, and we have invited the following individuals as briefers. Um, American journalist Richard Engel from NBC, Somali journalist Mustafa Haji Abdiner from Radio Simba and Agence France Press, Iraqi journalist Gaith Abdul Ahad from The Guardian, and Kathleen Carroll from the Associated Press and the Committee to Protect Journalists. The briefers will give member states a first-hand account of the dangers inherent in conflict journalism, and obviously reporting from conflict areas is an invaluable, if indirect, source of information for the Council. Uh, to further the crucial work you and your colleagues do, we will be hosting a side event, a tech camp, to bring together technologists, media professionals, the NGO community, and international organizations to explore tech solutions to problems confronting journalists in conflicts around the world. The tech camp will be held at CUNY Graduate School for Journalism from July 25th to 26th. This will be an interactive and hands-on event where roughly 80 participants from countries across the globe will spend the majority of their time in small group discussion. Now turning to the more traditional business of the Security Council, we will renew the mandates of UNMIS and UNAMID, and we'll also maintain our regular engagement on Sudan and South Sudan as outlined in Resolution 2046, including the issues of Abye and the dire humanitarian crisis in Southern Kordofan and Blue Nile states. <clears throat> on July 8th, a Special Representative Hilda Johnson will brief the Council on the regular 120-day report on UNMIS. On July 11th and 24th, Special Envoy Haley Mincurious will discuss the security situation on the ground, the implementation of the Joint Border Verification and Monitoring Mechanism, and status of agreements on oil and economic cooperation. And uh, finally, on July 24th, Under Secretary General Latsus will bring, brief the Council on the Secretary General's quarterly report on UNAMID. Now, the 1701 consultations on July 9th will be an important opportunity for the Council to hear directly from Special Coordinator Derek Plumley about the impact on Lebanon of the conflict in Syria, including the recent border incursions that have threatened Lebanon's sovereignty. 
and on July 23rd, we will hold a quarterly open debate on the Middle East. On Cyprus, July 15th consultations will allow us time to discuss with Special Representative Lisa Buttenheim the state of relations between Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots and the possibility of progress toward a settlement. Also on the 15th of July, the chair of the Security Council's Iran Sanctions Committee, Ambassador uh, Gary Quinlan of Australia, will brief the Council on the Committee's activities during the previous 90 days. Council is scheduled to renew the mandate of UNAMI. Uh, we will continue to provide critical support, which will continue to provide critical support to the Iraqi government. On the July 24th, uh, Special Representative Martin Kobler will brief uh, for the last time as head of UNAMI. In addition to UNAMI, UNMIS, and UNAMID, the Council is scheduled to renew the mandates also of UNOSI and UNFASIP, as well as sanctions regime for Somalia and Eritrea. Now, we'll be following a number of other troubling situations around the globe, in particular, of course, Syria. Now, finally, given that this is the month of July, we will also be holding a reception on July 29th to celebrate our Independence Day, as well as the end of the presidency. And with that, I'd be happy to take your questions. We'll go ahead and start with the president of the UN Correspondents Association, Pam. Thank you very much, Erin. And Ambassador DiCarlo, it's Pamela Falk from CBS News. And on behalf of the UN Correspondents Association, welcome. Congratulations on the presidency and on your position as acting perm rep. So thank you very much for briefing us. Uh, my question to you is, since Secretary of State Kerry has been around the Middle East, a lot of uh, shuttle diplomacy, is there any thought of reinvigorating um, the Middle East Quartet, since the United Nations does obviously have a role in that? Um, and then just one little technical question, will, there be, will you be doing anything with Malala when she comes to the UN? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela, for your question. Uh, first of all, Secretary Kerry is actively engaged, as you said, on the Middle East peace process. He was just in the region. Uh, he's made clear he's been invited back, uh, intends to pursue this. Uh, he, he and the President devote a tremendous amount of attention to this issue. Um, obviously, we are going to use every avenue, every mechanism that we can to further this process. Right now, his focus is on getting the two parties back to the table. Uh, as far as Malala is concerned, we will not be doing something during our presidency here uh, with Malala. But we're aware of events that are going on around town. Uh, Madam Ambassador, this is Kahraman Hali Selik with uh, Turkish Radio Television. I have two questions, if I may. Uh, one is um, about Syria. Our sources say that actually the Geneva II conference will not convene probably after, uh, till after September. Now, uh, until the, um, if, if it convenes, uh, until the conference, what can be achieved in the Council I mean, during this month or the following months, uh, what will you do as, uh, you know, in your capacity as the ambassador for the U.S.? And the other question I have is on Cyprus. Uh, you know, the U.N. needs a lot of money to uh, maintain a lot of uh, peace um, missions around the world. Why do you think it is necessary to have a U.N. mission in Cyprus where uh, there is no conflict? Thank you. Okay. Thank, thanks for your question. First of all, on, uh, on Syria, on Geneva II, uh, we've said from the beginning that the conference would be convened as soon as, as practical. Uh, and no date has been set, uh, no deadline has been set, uh, but uh, Secretary Kerry did speak with Foreign Minister Lavrov and Brunei. They had very uh, good discussions. Um, they uh, resolved some of the issues that had been raised the previous week um, when Assistant Secretary Beth Jones and Robert Ford met with their counterparts. Uh, and we will continue to work actively uh, toward a date as soon as possible uh, for the conference. Uh, as far as the Council is concerned, we're obviously following the issue very carefully. Um, particularly uh, on the humanitarian side, we had a humanitarian briefing recently by uh, Valerie Amos. Um, we, uh, we can depend that the Council will follow it. I cannot predict what meetings we might have, uh, 
whether there would be actions or not, but it's certainly an issue that is on everyone's mind, not only the issue in Syria, but its impact on the region. Your question on, on Cyprus uh, and on the UN uh, peacekeeping operation there. Uh, we have seen that uh, Cyprus is, um, has been very valuable uh, to the parties. Uh, and again, I speak now in my national capacity here. Um, they, so the, the mission, UMPASIP, has helped with a number of confidence building measures that have really sort of helped create the environment for talks and for negotiations. My understanding is that the government of Cyprus, I believe, supports about 50 percent of that mission. It, so it's only half funded by the UN. We'll take the next question from the Associated Press. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. Um, I. I had um, one, one follow-up question on Syria. Um, is the United States uh, still actively um, providing um, information to the Secretary General um, and to um, Aki Selstrom's team on possible chemical weapons use in Syria? and? Um, on the main um, debate on the 25th on the Great Lakes region, um, do you expect any outcome from it? Will there be a resolution? Will there be a presidential statement? And, and what's, what in a broader way is your hope for the outcome in taking that issue forward? Thank, thank you for your questions. Uh, for, on the first question, again, I'm answering in my national capacity. I keep forgetting to distinguish here uh, on the issue of uh, Syria. Uh, yes, indeed, we have um, spoken with Aka Selstrom. Uh, we think it's important for any country that has information about use uh, of chemical weapons or possible use of chemical weapons to provide the UN investigator this information. So we have uh, had discussions with him. Uh, obviously, uh, the goal is for Mr. Seltram to enter Syria so that he can do a thorough investigation of all of the information at hand. Um, that has not happened, regrettably. Um, but we and others will continue to call for this access. The second question on the Great Lakes, Great Lakes is Great Lakes and, and the outcome for that meeting. Well, we want to raise the visibility of it. We want to continue high-level attention to the Great Lakes region. A lot has been done. The Secretary General and President Kim of the World Bank took a joint trip. They added sort of another pr pillar to this uh, initiative. We have security, political, and development. This is really important. It's why we're really honored that President Kim has agreed to uh, participate in this session to uh, underline the, the need to uh, tackle, if you will, the underlying causes of the conflict in the region. We uh, do anticipate a product from that session. Um, we would anticipate a presidential statement, uh, basically reinforcing a lot of uh, we have, what we have said uh, before, encouraging all the parties to live up the signatories to the framework agreement to live up to their commitments. Um, we are working with the delegation of France on the PRST. They have the lead and the pen on this in the council. We'll take the next question from Ragida. Um, yes, uh, the question is about uh, partly about Syria, partly about Iran. And there has been a decision by the GCC, the Gulf Council Corporation, to come to the Security Council with the issue of Homs. You've also seen statements by the Secretary General worried about the developments in Homs. In either of your capacity or both, could you tell us what are you doing about that? Do you plan to also put Homs on the map in the Security Council? And in the second part, uh, the second question is regarding what you said on sanctions committee and the briefing by the Australian mm -hmm. ambassador. Are you, um, do you have anything in mind on that or just a briefing given that there has been a violation of Security Council resolutions by Iran regarding uh, the role that Iran is playing in Syria? Can you shed light on both, in both capacities, please? Okay, on the um, first issue, um, well, let me take the second issue first, and I'll speak this in my capacity as president. This is the periodic briefing of the Sanctions Committee to the Security Council. It's the 90-day report. 
where uh, it is compiled by the committee based on information at hand, uh, in particular from the panel of experts. So this will be um, the periodic briefing. It'll be in the chamber where we anticipate member states will deliver interventions, will speak on the issue and raise the importance of Iran's complying with existing resolutions and its international obligations. On the first issue on, on Syria, uh, and I will I'll split this up, uh, again, split this up if you don't mind. Uh, the Council has not received any official um, or in even informal requests to uh, host a meeting on this issue. I've seen reports, we've seen reports in the press, but we do not have a request from a member state to host a meeting on this issue. Uh, as I said, the Council is going to be following the issue. Uh, certainly, the United States uh, will follow it closely. I can't predict what kind of meetings we might have or what we might be doing in the Council, but I can just assure you that this is on our radar every day. As a follow-up in your uh, national capacity, mm -hmm. do you plan to move at all on the issue of Homs? Do you have something to say about it? And also, uh, will you satisfy yourself with just hearing the briefing on Iran? National capacity. And national capacity. Okay. On, on the issue of homes, I mean, we've been very clear. We've denounced the violence there. We've called for unimpeded access uh, by humanitarian organizations. Uh, and uh, we have uh, de deplored, frankly, what is going on uh, with homes. We are also providing, uh, as we can, um, medical assistance, humanitarian assistance uh, to uh, the opposition in the area, and we'll continue to do so. Uh, I'm not sure if I understand your, your question correctly, and what do we plan to do? Uh, as, as far as President of the Council is concerned, you know, we are going to be chairing the meetings that member states call for or agree on uh, in that matter. And then on the issue of Iran, um, I think I can be uh, quite clear in saying that we want we're monitoring very, very closely all of Iran's non-compliance. And when it is appropriate, we will take action, further action in the council. We'll go to Reuters next. Um, I wanted to follow up on Edie's question about the Great Lakes. Um, you mentioned that uh, one of the issues you want to look at is um, living up to the commitments of the framework agreement. Mm -hmm. um, the recent group of experts report on the DRC raised um, the fact that, uh, well, it said that uh, Rwandan support for M23 has decreased but continues, and it said that the FARDC has been collaborating with the FDLR. Um, don't these uh, issues concern the U.S., and is this something that you might you know, raise in the course of these discussions? Thanks. Okay. Thanks, thanks for your question, Lou. Um, the group of experts report is currently with the DRC Sanctions Committee uh, for consideration. It's going to be discussed by the Council later in the month. Um, the report um, will be released publicly after uh, the Council discusses it. Um, we can't comment on the contents of this report while it is confidential. It is a confidential committee report at this point. We'll go all the way to the back. If you could identify yourself. Celia Mendoza for Voice of America Latin American Service. Um, we're interested to find out um, what the Council um, will do or will be monitoring um, what's happening in Egypt and also um, what you, you can say about the situation with North Korea, especially after the meeting, um, meeting the, Sen uh, the Secretary of State had with the Asian countries in the region. Okay, thank you. Uh, on the issue of Egypt, obviously, we're very Council, all council members are very concerned by what's happening in, in Egypt. I won't speak for them, uh, but all I can say is that um, this is an issue that they would be watching, as we will be watching carefully. The United States is certainly watching the issue carefully. Egypt has not been on our agenda. Uh, and uh, that said, I think it's very clear we're all following closely at this point. But we had, there's no scheduled meeting on it. And DPRK, sorry, I forgot the second part. Um, on DPRK, um, we've been very clear uh, that you know we are ready for negotiations. We are ready for dialogue. We're open to it, uh, but that North Korea has to has to abide by its international commitments, by its obligations, by commitments it made back in 2005. Um, we haven't seen that happen yet. We'll go to Matt. 
for the, for the free, new free UN Coalition for Access. Thanks for doing this. I wanted to ask about the, the I understand you can't talk about the, the, the group of experts on the DRC, but you do, it's public knowledge, the, the, this idea of the rapes that took place in Minova back in November, 135 rapes, and there have been two arrests, it appears, so far of, F, of, of the FARDC units involved. One unit was actually was trained by the U.S. I want to sort of sharpen the question and say, what is the U.S. satisfied by DPKO continuing to work with those units when this GOE Republic, uh, report, which is already seen, becomes public. It describes also FARDC units involved in, in gold mining, child soldiers, and the like. And I just wonder what the U.S. thinks the role of the Council is in ensuring that the U.N. system doesn't work with the units involved in, the, in the, these activities. And also, this is definitely in your national capacity. Um, 19 members of Congress wrote to the Secretary General last month about the role of the UN in, in, in the, they said, the introduction of cholera into Haiti and say, urging him to take greater responsibility and for the UN to do more. And I wonder, is the mission aware of that letter and has it taken any action or been asked to by those Congress people to, to ensure greater UN action on that issue? Thanks. Okay, thank, thanks for your question. First of all, again, the report will be studied by the Council uh, and uh, we will certainly be participating in that discussion. Uh, you know, we are, you know, ourselves, in our national capacity, I will say that, you know, we ourselves assess reports uh, that we get either from the UN or from elsewhere. Uh, we, all, we are assessing reports of possible outside interference in the DRC. Uh, we continue, obviously, to be very clear uh, with DPKO, with the UN, with troop contributors, uh, that we expect them to abide by UN guidelines, that we expect the kind of uh, behavior that we would demand of our own forces, uh, and these are areas that we will continue to look into and continue to make very clear that certain kinds of behavior are not acceptable. Now, I'm, you know, I'm not agreeing with what you have said. I'm, you're, I'm just saying that in, in the case that this, this is, has been determined, that is our position. And on Haiti cholera. Oh, Haiti cholera. I, I'm sorry, I haven't seen that letter, and we have to get back to you on that. Great. We'll go to Benny Abney. Two quick questions. First of all, in the footnotes, you have uh, non-proliferation. I wonder what that is. Secondly, oops. Secondly, um, about Egypt, to go back to the situation in Egypt, one of your uh, predecessors, who, if memory serves, even served as, uh, as acting ambassador for a while, and Patterson has been personally uh, brought up by demonstrators in the last few days. I wonder if, for criticism, I wonder if um, in your national capacity and even personal capacity, you have anything to say about the criticism uh, directed at the U.S. Uh, in Egypt? Okay, thank you. Thanks, thanks, Benny. On nonproliferation, um, this is an item that we have almost every month uh, as a footnote, and it refers to Iran and North Korea in particular. Um, the whole nonproliferation you know, non agenda in general, but certainly for Iran and North Korea. Uh, on the issue of Egypt and Ambassador Patterson, uh, who is an old colleague of mine and with whom I worked on UN issues together, um, I think we've been very clear in our support for Egyptian democracy, for the process. The president's been very clear that you know we don't support one side or another. We're supporting a process. Ambassador Patterson has done the same as well. She's called for calm. She's made very clear that uh, individuals have the right to um, to demonstrate, to to speak openly, um, but should do so peacefully. So I think the criticism is quite ill-founded. We'll go right here. Yeah, Joseph Klein of Canada Free Press. Um, Madam Amb Ambassador, I just wanted to ask um, regarding the arms trade treaty, whether there, I guess in your national capacity, uh, there is any plan um, in the near future for the U.S. to sign that treaty. Thank you. Yeah. Th thanks for the question. Yes, in my national capacity. Uh, we said uh, when uh, th the first day of signing of the arms trade treaty, when others were signing, that we announced our intention to sign. Uh, we are awaiting the 90-day period for the language versions to be conformed. That's a, often a practice of the United States. We want to make sure that every, every version obviously has the same weight. Uh, and that period has not passed yet. Uh, 
Uh, George Baumgarten, correspondent for Jewish newspapers in North America and for Nation Media Group East Africa, which will explain why I'm asking these different questions. Uh, the first, the open debate on the 23rd on the Middle East, and I assume that would include a major briefing probably from Under Secretary Feltman. And with relation uh, to the debate on the Great Lakes on the 25th, do I understand correctly that Secretary Kerry will be coming uh, and Mr. Kim, and will you include any consideration of the LRA affected areas in that debate? Uh, and this tech camp that you're holding uh, that day and the next day, is that something to which the, uh, the UN media community is invited? Okay. Uh, on the, the first question was on the Middle East debate. Middle East debate, it'll be Robert Siri, Special Coordinator Siri will be uh, briefing. On, uh, Jeff Feldman will be on vacation, I understand the time, and um, we will have Robert Siri briefing on a range of issues in the Middle East. Uh, on the issue of the tech camp, Erin um, has the, all the information on it. She's got a website, and the, I would direct you to the website. We have um, participants who have signed up already. It is um, www.techcampglobal.org um, slash NYC. We can give this to you afterwards as well. And you had one more question. The 25th, the LRA. Uh, LRA. 25th, and we'll include the LRA. Uh, I, I would. Um, I, I don't know if uh, you know briefers will make reference to the LRA or not. I think we'll, that we will see uh, if that will happen. Yes, indeed, it will be Secretary Kerry who is chairing the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Right here. Yep. Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Ambassador. My name is Yasu Sawa from Kyoto News, a Japan's news wire service. Um, my question is, um, do you have anything to share with us on the, the recent development of UNDOF, uh, the Golan Heights peacekeeping operation? Is there, has any member states come, uh, come, come forward to contribute the troops? And second part is, do you have any specific idea to implement better uh, the sanction regimes, uh, both of um, Iran and North Korea, as the the panel of expert report last month, uh, both panel of repo, uh, panel report was published and indicating uh, numbers of uh, violation cases. Okay, uh, on the issue of UNDOF, I know that uh, DPKO is working very actively um, with member states uh, to solicit additional troops. Uh, I uh, have not been informed of. Uh, in, in the status of it, whether additional troops have come forward yet, but they are in discussions with quite a range of countries. Uh, you know about the Fijian troops that have uh, committed to come, and they are considering augmenting their numbers as well. Um, on the issue of sanctions, as you said, uh, obviously full compliance um, with sanctions is, is key, is important. And I think the sanctions committees and the panels of experts have been doing a very good job in trying to uh, get out more information about these committees. And the information is key here. Information about what is happening and information about what countries need to do. Uh, I commend the chairs of the sanctions committees who have been doing open briefings for the members of the, of the UN community uh, in order uh, for them to understand a bit better on what kinds of things need to be done and how the, the mechanisms for doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam uh, President. My name is Salva Jindu, the Kuwait News Agency. I understand the Council is going to uh, renew the mandate on uh, July 24th of UNAMI. And uh, I wonder if the new resolution will reflect uh, the tasks that have been assigned to UNAMI uh, the, the ones that were adopted last week between Iraq and Kuwait. Thank you. Yes, th thank, thank you very much. Um, we will be renewing the mandate. Um, we don't in envision a significant change to the mandate, I should tell you that, but there will be reference to the resolution that was adopted last week and the new role for UNAMI in Iraq-Kuwait relations. Yeah. Like one or two more. I think there's one Way in the back. Thank you. Um, two questions. One, I see the Central African Republic is, sorry, Iran Stover from Security Council report. Thank you. Uh, Central African Republic is in the footnotes, but since there was a Binoka report due by the end of the month, I'm just wondering why it's not on the program of work. 
And second of all, um, given that there is the uh, debate on the 25th on the DRC and the Great Lakes, I'm just w curious as to on the 11th there's consultations on MINUSCO. So I'm just wondering who would be briefing and on what exactly. Thank you. Okay. Th thanks for your question. First of all, the Banuka report is delayed, uh, which is why b the session on Banuka, the peacebuilding office in the CAR, has come off the agenda. Uh, we have kept uh, Central African Republic in the footnotes uh, because uh, there is a lot of concern about what is happening there. We anticipate we might um, have a briefing uh, from the Secretariat, perhaps, uh, on sort of different aspects of the conflict going on. Um, and then your last question was MINUSCO. The reason MINUSCO is separate, um, the debate on the 25th is Great Lakes, uh, writ large, DRC and Great Lakes. On the 11th, we will be discussing the Secretary General's report specifically, and Hervé Latsus, Under Secretary General for Peacekeeping, will be our briefer. Final question, Tim. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. Will Mr. Selstrom be coming to the Security Council at any time to brief the Council, and is he going to submit a report to you? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, currently, there are no plans for him to come to the Council. And as far as a, any report is concerned, I think you'd have to ask the Secretary General's office. He's reporting directly to the Secretary General. Sure. Rhonda Hogan and uh, for tats.de, which is uh, the online site of Die Tage Zeitung. And my qu one of my questions is a follow-up to what you said earlier, that um, about the DPRK following up on its commitments made in 2005. I'd appreciate hearing exactly what you're referring to in 205. And the second question relates to what um, has been raised as, as, as an issue about the UN command not being an appropriate designation for the US government to decide decisions in, in the things involving the Koreas and, and the, um, what, what's happening with the um, what's happening in general. And can you say, if you have a response, um, one, uh, in your national capacity, and two, if uh, there's, this was raised in the Security Council, and if there's any sense in the Security Council to take this issue up. Okay, this is the issue of the UN Command. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'm going to refer you to the Department of Defense on the UN Command. Uh, uh, I think uh, it would be better placed uh, as a question to them. Uh, certainly, we have been, uh, this has not been raised in the Security Council, I can tell you that. Uh, certainly, we have been very clear uh, that North Korea needs to um, implement uh, the commitments that have been made in the past uh, regarding its nuclear program, uh, to abandon in all nuclear weapons in its nuclear program. And that is a, something that we have been uh, quite consistent on. We, we were talking about, we, no, we were just talking about the joint statement of, two, of the six-party talks in 205. 